nobody in scientific literature or any farrier's journals has ever said that the hoof compresses. We've been shoeing horses probably for 2,000 years. So. Now, how do, you, how do you use your PhD to, and apply it to, to horse being a farrier? Because the way I, the way, and I'm not taking anything away from the PhD, I always think like a PhD would be the teacher and a farrier would be the doer. You know, like the hands-on, the blue-collar worker as a, a white-collar worker. So how do those, I mean, how do you, how do you apply your, your, your doctorate to the horse's feet? So I left at 16. I went down the forge. I got an apprenticeship. I did what every other farrier does. And then I sort of started to get a bit bored. And that's how I got into academia. So, so I am a farrier first and foremost. And since I finished my PhD 10 years ago, I have gradually reverted from a scientist back to being a farrier, where I'm most comfortable. But I also, really, I studied what I was used to seeing, and and that's got to be the best thing for, um, not just for me, but the whole point of a PhD is that you find you have new knowledge, and it's then how you disseminate it. So I've really spent 10 years disseminating some of that and 90% of the time I'm disseminating to farriers. So I, I, I try and use that knowledge uh, through them uh, to help the horse and to continue to improve uh, horse shoeing and especially trimming with young stock. So once you got your PhD, you, you, uh, you looked at the way the horse's feet a little different? Or was it almost the same? Like, were you finding like theories from when you work from the ground up as to coming from a PhD and working back down to the hoof? Did you find any theories that were kind of contradicting themselves and you were like, oh, well, wait, wait a minute, I know this because of this? Yeah, well, that's always a great thing to do to, to say to people. But um, I, I think I found, um, I did find new things. Nobody in scientific literature or any farrier's journals has ever said, that the hoof compresses. We talk about crushed feet, crushed heels, uh, and overloaded, but nobody's actually ever suggested that as a material, it, it would compress. And I was able to show that scientifically. So in a normal healthy hoof, it compresses as it grows down. But in a horse with uh, a conformational imbalance, so it's leaning more on one side, putting more stress on the toe, that horn will compress more because it's taking more loading and that is measurable as well.